today we're gonna be going over why i switched the keyboard and mouse and there's so much to talk about since my origin story was so long ago but in this video i'll be showing you guys exactly how i went from an average controller player all the way to a pro arena grinder and player on keyboard and mouse and for those of you guys wondering who's this kid and why should i even trust his advice going from controller to keyboard and mouse and the reason is i went from an average controller player to switching to keyboard and mouse and getting 100,000 arena points every single season for an entire year straight i have the editing world record for the most amount of edits in one single session as well as dozens of top 100 to 200 placements in pro tournaments and i'll be spilling a ton of my secrets in this video showing guys the maps that i used to go from an average controller player to a keyboard pro as well as my mentality with this so i can help you guys become a way better player so make sure you watch until the end so you don't miss a single piece of information and as always if you guys want to personally ask me any questions on how to improve feel free to write a comment down below or you can ask me on my twitch chat i stream every single day on twitch twitch.tv slash halo bt there's going to be a link in the pinned comments as well as in the description down below anyways enough of the rambling let's get started with my keyboard and mouse progression story so my controller origin story is actually a little bit different than other players here in the fortnite community because i started way back when i was two years old on my xbox 360. i was around two years old when i first started getting into gaming and i played a ton of controller speeding up the years until i was actually able to play games properly when i was around 10 years old it was around 2016 and fortnite was still save the world at the time so of course your boy was playing games like call of duty minecraft and other third person shooter games and i played all of this on my xbox with just a regular xbox controller and around this time we did have a family computer that i would play games on occasionally but i wasn't particularly good at it and i would have just played casual games like sims or minecraft i didn't bother with the shooter games unless it was on controller so i really didn't have any good practice on keyboard and mouse until fortnite came along anyway 2018 rolls around and i started playing fortnite it was fresh off the block everyone was talking about it at school it was blowing up in the news it was just everywhere i started playing in chapter one season four when the battle pass looked like this literally the omega skin dude like that was such a long time ago it's crazy to think about but i actually started playing fortnite on controller and kind of pc at the same time i played very little on pc just kind of for fun and mainly played on controller since i was way better from season four to season five i mainly played fortnite on controller since it was just way easier for me i had all those years of experience playing other games like call of duty so my aim and my builds weren't actually too bad but when season six of chapter one came out there was something called the secret skirmish it was a pro fortnite tournament that had I believe around a half a million dollar prize pool and it was massive in the community at the time and of course me being a super competitive person realizing that fortnite was starting to turn into a professional game i decided to stop playing the game casually and actually try to go pro so i'm not sure if you guys played on controller in early chapter one but it was rough for controller players most pros back then were actually on pc and it just had so many advantages that controller was just completely outnumbered and since i played on console it was limited to 60 fps at the time and it was just so laggy and it just didn't work well i couldn't afford a scuff controller or any of the high-end controllers that a lot of controller pros were using so i just had a basic old xbox controller and as you guys know it is really hard to play unless you know claw so i was playing every single day all day and i was not getting anywhere on controller i felt so stuck and so demotivated and just disappointed like i i saw all of these other pro players that i looked up to playing on keyboard and mouse and I was also playing on keyboard and mouse, but I didn't really full try. I didn't commit to it. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to send it. I'm going to become a pro player on keyboard and mouse. I completely stopped playing on controller for Fortnite and I full switched to keyboard and mouse. And this is one of the best decisions I've ever made, but it was also really difficult. And I'm going to tell you guys exactly what I did right and what I did wrong. So chapter one, season seven rolled around. And this was the Christmas season where the battle pass looked like this. And a little old something called creative mode came out and... We'll get into that in a second. So in this season, they had massive tournaments. This is when Chapter 1 started getting super popular for competitive Fortnite, and they released the multi-million dollar cup known as Winter Royale. They also had tons of other cups ranging from $100,000 to even $200,000. So your boy wanted to win some of that, got serious. And it was perfect timing because like I just said earlier, creative mode came out and this was huge. I saw pro players such as Mongrel at the time grinding these things called edit courses. And I knew that was going to be the future of Fortnite. So I searched up online the best edit courses and best aim courses to practice Fortnite and just improve in general. 
and I sat there and grinded these maps all day, every single day, the entire season. I played every single day watching pro players play to learn their new techniques, doing these edit courses for hours and hours on end, doing aim courses to make sure I wasn't just fast at editing, but I was actually good at the game. And I believe around this time we were at 3000 subs, which is just absolutely insane to think about because we're coming up on a million right now which i just can't thank you guys enough for you guys are the ghosts man anyways i just kept going full demon mode until chapter one season eight and this is when i saw something called arena popping off and you probably know where this is going <laughs> the arena was actually out before this in season seven but no one really paid attention to it because it was just kind of a mess and you had to get 300 points to get champs but then a win was like three points. It was popular, but at the same time, no one really cared and wanted to grind it just because of how much of a mess it was. So when season eight came out, they did a ton of reworks to arena and it was actually a lot more playable of an experience. So this is when I hopped on it and started doing an arena grind as well as playing the various tournaments that were available in the season, actually qualifying for round two for a couple of them. Around this time, I would say I was a little bit above average in the sense of I was incredibly fast at editing, but my competitive awareness just sucked and i really couldn't hit shots even though i was doing these aim maps so when season 9 came out and world cup was announced i was super motivated but also really demotivated at the same time because at this point i wasn't really improving i was going demon mode trying my hardest doing all these edit courses doing all these aim courses and i was still just stuck there was a piece of the puzzle that i was missing and in season 9 i started to realize this a little more Anyway, chapter two was absolutely crazy for me. Quarantine hit, and as you guys know, this was a horrible time for the whole world. But at the same time, it was also a good point, and there was a lot of opportunity in gaming, especially with the Fortnite community. So I decided to lock in even harder than I ever have before, and I full grinded tournaments as well as Arena. As you guys know from earlier, we did play a lot of Arena in chapter one, but I didn't really grind it. I just kind of hit champs and then called it a day and didn't really bother playing it to get better. I just played it to get champs and then move on, you know? And this was a big thing that I finally realized in chapter two. So from chapter two, season two to chapter two, season three, I was just nonstop playing tournaments. I played enough arena to get a little bit better, but I didn't really bother with it yet. And I also did a ton of aim training as well as edit courses. So I felt that I had really good edits and I was definitely above average but I wasn't crazy yet. My aim was lacking and a certain piece of the puzzle was still lacking too. And this is when my big blow up season happened and chapter two, season four. And it was more towards the end of season four when I realized this, but one of the pieces of the puzzle that I was missing was I wasn't taking arena seriously enough. Like I said earlier, I was playing it to get champs and I was good enough to get champs consistently, but I wasn't playing it afterwards. And I also really wasn't playing arena to improve. Like I was, but I wasn't. What I thought all of the improving came from was just grinding creative and edit courses and aim courses, but that was only half the solution. I was missing the other half. I was missing the secret. And so in season four, I put my head down and full, full grinded. And I became very good at fighting in solo arena. I got about 30,000 arena points in the season, which was absolutely crazy for me at the time because my previous best was 7,000. And I became so much better at fighting and I started to understand a bunch of pro player secrets. One of them being confidence. And I really used this in season five when I ended up hitting my big YouTube blow up, hitting 100,000 subscribers, as well as hitting 100,000 arena points for the first time ever. I grinded arena every single day, all day, five hours plus. I was VOD reviewing my gameplay, looking at how I died. Instead of just getting mad that I died to some random player in solo arena, I was sitting there and going, how did I die? What did they do to me for me to lose the fight? And I started to learn all of these strategies that I never really paid attention to prior. So I, I pretty much had like a Sharingan at that point where I was just copying and pasting other pros moves as well as other people who were beating me and using half the puzzle of edit courses and aim courses grinding as well as the other part of the puzzle, which is confidence. I was able to just W key everyone in arena and arena started to feel like a pub match. I was literally dropping 20 kill games almost every single game with an 80% win rate in arena. I got so good at the game and it felt so casual, but I knew at this point I wasn't where I wanted to be. I wasn't quite a pro player yet. I wasn't quite a pro player yet. I was placing like top 500, top 600, which wasn't bad but it wasn't what I wanted. So from the middle of chapter two in chapter two, season five, all the way to the end of the chapter, I was doing the same stuff. I was grinding scrims, grinding arena all day, 
copying and pasting people's moves when I died to them in arena. I was learning all of the new techniques. I was a very confident player, W keying everyone. I wasn't afraid to lose arena points and I wasn't afraid to die in fights. And having this positive mindset as well as seeing myself improve so much from just being an average controller player all the way to an insane player on keyboard and mouse, I was so motivated. And not only that, we were around 150,000 subscribers at this time. So the YouTube channel was popping. So I was just super, super happy in general, which I just can't thank you guys enough for. I'm so, so grateful to be in this position today. You guys are seriously the best, man. That was my sad attempt at a heart, but you guys are seriously the best, bro. I appreciate you. Anyways, for chapter three and chapter four, it's kind of the same story where I was just grinding every single day, doing arena, doing scrims, doing aim courses, doing edit courses, doing tournaments, just doing everything I could. And without this video being half an hour long and going super super in depth into every single little thing that happens that's pretty much where i am today i'm placing well in tournaments i'm grinding arena every single day on my twitch streams i'm improving every single day with my new duo partner water everything is just great so to finally answer the question why did i switch to keyboard and mouse and it was because i just felt so stuck on controller i didn't feel like i was going anywhere i would play every single day and i just wouldn't really improve i was just always in the same spot i saw all these other keyboard and mouse players going pro and popping off in tournaments and i wanted to do the same so this leaves the question how can you watching this video go from a decent or maybe even above average controller player to an absolute go at keyboard and mouse if you want to be an absolute go in pubs go in arena or even go in tournaments then listen up because i'm about to tell you guys the secrets so to go from controller to keyboard and mouse you need a couple different things and we're gonna go over it right now you need to figure out your binds as well as your sensitivity because that is the main thing that's really gonna help you excel as a keyboard and mouse player which is super easy to do all you want to do is hop into creative and load up a youtube video on another device you want to make sure you're taking pro settings or really really good player settings as a template and you're tweaking and improving it a pro player isn't good because of their settings they're good because they're good with their settings. So you want to tweak it until you find something that totally works for you. If you know you're a low sense player on controller, then try a lower sense first and then just keep tweaking it around until you find something you're comfortable with. And it's really the same thing if you're a high sense player. If you're a high sense on controller, just keep tweaking it over and over again until you find something you like for keyboard and mouse. Same thing with your binds as well as your in-game setting. If a pro that you like and respect is using performance mode, then use performance mode. You'll probably get better FPS as well as lower input delay so you can edit faster as well as play better. I would seriously recommend using either low meshes or high meshes on performance mode. That way you have the best possible advantage. With your key binds, look at a pro's binds and slightly adjust it. For an example, if a pro uses E to edit, and if that's kind of uncomfortable for you, then use F instead. You know, switch it up a little bit, but make sure it's something you're comfortable with and that you play the best with this can take a couple hours in creative you just sit there and just keep tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until you find something that your hand just feels very natural with and works well for you and then once you find the settings that you're really comfortable with and like you want to head into creative and grind edit courses and aim courses and like i said earlier in the video this is only half the puzzle you can't just sit in creative and instantly become a god at the game you have to do other stuff and we'll get into that in just a second you want to spend at least two hours a day or really whenever you can just grinding edit courses and aim maps right now on screen are a bunch of aim maps and edit maps that i personally recommend if you want a in-depth tutorial on how i use the maps to improve definitely let me know in the comments down below and i can show you guys exactly what i do to become a better player anyway you want to grind aim courses and edit courses as much as you can for a couple hours each day and you want to do this until you're really comfortable on keyboard you're able to do 90s you're able to do double edits you're able to box up you just want to relearn all this stuff you know on controller and apply it to keyboard and mouse and the best part about this is since you already know how to do the stuff on controller learning on keyboard and mouse will be hard but also you already know what to do you know where to put your crosshair you know how to do the edit you know how to do 90s because you've already learned that so it's just getting the feel for keyboard and mouse down and really just relearning how to play anyway once you have the core mechanics down you want to play fighting maps on creative so either zone wars the pit 1v1 maps just anything where you're fighting people constantly in some manner play so many hours of these until you feel decently comfortable on pc to the point where you're winning a zone wars every couple games you know you're destroying everyone in the pit and you have 25 kills you want to make sure that you're pretty decent at the game at this point and at this point you're gonna feel pretty average on keyboard and mouse which is a good thing and a bad thing because look where you came from you know you're so much better at the game and you actually properly learned how to play keyboard and mouse which is awesome but if you're trying to win every single game in pubs or win most of the arena games you play or even become a pro player 
you're not gonna be quite satisfied at this point so if you really want to be an overachiever i recommend playing solo arena or solo late game every single day and every single time you die you want to look at exactly how you're dying and what that player did to you did they hit you with a pre-fire did they hit you with a new move you've never seen before did they have better aim in the fight just any of those and you want to head into creative and copy and paste those methods just full-on activate your sharingan and copy and paste what people are doing to you to eliminate you and use those methods on other players and then doing this over and over again you're gonna become super good at keyboard and mouse and you'll really be able to go off from there you can join scrim servers and grind tournaments and pretty much qual for anything but remember learning keyboard and mouse doesn't happen overnight and you really don't want to half effort it you want to go full throttle so if you really really want to learn keyboard and mouse i would recommend completely stopping controller just go full cold turkey and play keyboard and mouse you're gonna feel really bad at the game at first but you'll eventually get super good and it's also more about the journey than the destination it's gonna be really frustrating at times but it's also gonna be really fun and i personally had a ton of fun learning keyboard and mouse on fortnite and i think you guys will too but remember you want to be confident and even if you're not confident just fake it till you make it you know what i mean like you just want to full send bro and just really try your best as well as also understand it's gonna take a while you know you're gonna be on this grind for weeks and weeks and weeks but just think about two months from now you're able to do triple edits on keyboard and mouse you're gonna feel so good so just keep that in the back of your head for motivation and just understand this stuff really doesn't happen overnight and then finally having a positive mindset is the biggest part of it because if you're like oh man i can't do 90s i can't edit i can't do anything i just feel bad at the game then you're gonna be bad at the game a lot of fortnite and a lot of just anything in life is due to your mindset if you truly believe you're going to become a good keyboard and mouse player you will become a good keyboard and mouse player lock that in your head because it will happen if you say to yourself every day i'm gonna make it into champs on keyboard and mouse i'm gonna win a tournament then eventually you really will win a tournament you really will win every arena game and hit champs it's about being positive sticking to it and just practicing as much as you physically can and when you lose you don't get upset and don't take that as a setback and you just keep going anyways i wish you guys the absolute best of luck in your journey on keyboard and mouse yet again if you have any questions on how to improve or if you're stuck at a certain point in learning keyboard and mouse let me know in the comments down below or you can personally ask me on my live streams twitch.tv slash halo bt i'm live literally every single day and i read so much chat so if you have any questions ask me on there the link will be in the description down below as well as in the pinned comment but yeah if you did find today's video helpful then make sure to subscribe you can always change your mind later it means so much to me we're coming up on the big one milli and it'd be absolutely crazy if we can hit it if you guys want me to make more controller related videos then drop a like on this video if it hits 5,000 likes i got you guys anyways make sure you support a creator code halo bt in the shop please and thank you of course best of luck in your keyboard and mouse journey i love you guys so very much and i'll see you in my next video bye bye everyone